हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल एमएन कोचिंग सेंटर सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन योर क्लास 7 चैप्टर 7 डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म पार्ट 2 वीडियो सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई फिनिश दीस थिंग्स एंड आई स्टॉप्ड हियर इन द प्लांट्स हियर हियर सो Plants that do not have different plant parts, they are called as thallophyta. That have different plant parts, they are uh, that are without. Sp they are two types that are without specialized vascular tissue. That is bryophyta, with specialized vascular tissue. It has. It is also having two type that do not produce seeds. It is pteridophyta. And that produce seeds, they are the phanerogamous, and in that the produce seeds, they are of two types. They are bare naked seeds. They are bare seeds inside the fruit, and bare naked seeds are gymnosperm, and bare seeds inside the fruit are angiosperm. Angiosperm are of two types, having seed with two cotyledons, that is dicots, having seed with one cotyledon, that is monocots. Next is Animalia. So there are organisms which are eukaryotic, multicellular and heterotropic. Their cells do not have cell walls. Their cells do not have cell walls. And most animals are mobile. Most animals are, uh, means they are stable without the cell wall. So they are further classified in these Animalia is further classified into uh, classified on the extent and type of body design, different for uh, differentiation found on the differentiation we have found on them. First is porifera. So the word porifera it means organism with holes. The organism that has holes, holes, small holes, tiny holes is called as porifera. These are non-motile animals attached to some solid support. They are non-motile animals. They are attached to some solid support. And there are holes or pores all over the body. So they have holes or we can also say it as pores in all over their body it has. And these lead to a casual uh, lead to a canal system that helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen and these animals are covered with a hard outside layer or skeleton and their body design it involves very minimal differentiation and division into tissue and they are commonly called as sponges and are mainly found in marine habitats in water and some examples are see some examples are Euplectella, Cycone, Spongilia these are the some of the examples for porifera you can see small small pores on them next is coelent sorry coelentea Terata, that is Snidaria. So these are the animals that are living in water. These animals that live inside the water. And they show more body design differentiation. So they show more body design differentiation. There is a cavity in the body. And the body is made of two layers. So their body is made up of two layers of cells. Wow, one makes up cells on the outside of the body one cell is made on the outside of the body and the other makes the inner lining of the body so other one is the cell inside the body and some of these species live in colonies corals in some small small corals while others have a solitary like span hydra and jellyfish and sea and uh, sea animals are common example for them so here you can see this is hydra and this is sea anemone next is plathe 
है हेलमेंटिस The body of animals in this group is far more complexly designed than the body and then the two other groups that is the Coenterata uh, and Leoporifera live in that group. This body group is far more complexly, it is very much complexly designed. And the body is bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that the left and the right halves of the body have the same design so left and right part if we symmetrically if we bisect them the left and right part both have the same body design next there are three Uh, body innings no true internal body cavity or coelom and in which well developed organs can be accommodated so the body is flattened dorsventrally and meaning from top to bottom which is why these animals are called flatworms they are called as flatworms and they are either free living or parasites some of the example for this are the plan planarians and parasitic animals like here here you can see planaria and uh, liver flux and tape form these are some of the example for Prati Helmentia. See if you bisect them, see if you bisect the liver flux, the same half part you will get in so the left side and right side, right side also the half part of the liver flux you will get. So therefore they are symmetrically equal. Next is Nematoda. So in the Nematoda body is also bilaterally symmetrically symmetrical and triploblastic. However, the body is cylindrical, so their body is like a cylindrical structure rather than flattened. Rather than flattened, there is symmetrical structure. There are tissues but no real organs, so they have tissues but no organs they have. Also, a sort of body cavity or a pseudo pseudo coelom is present, and these are very familiar as parasitic worms causing diseases such as the worms causing elephantiasis or the worms in the intestine some examples are like this see there are some examples for nematoda is uh, ascaris and wakereria so these are some of the examples for nematoda next is analida anel sorry so annelida animals are uh, they are also same bilateral bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic but in addition they have a true body cavity but in little bit addition they have a small true cavity body cavity that is these also true organs to be packaged in the body structure they are also having the true organs in the in their body structure and there is thus extensive organs differentiation so there is thus extensive organ differentiation you can see this differentiation occurs in a segmental fashion in a same fashion segmental fashion with the segments lined up on one after the other from head to tail one after the other the segmental lines like a line these animals are found in the variety in the variety different habits like in fresh water marine water and in some lands also you can see earthworms and leeches are familiar examples so earthworms you know in the land so earthworms leeches also you know see and earthworm leeches neresis these are some of the example for analida 
next is arthropoda so this is probably the largest group of animals so this is a largest very big group of of animals you can say these animals are bilaterally symmetrical uh, symmetrical and segmented so there is an open circulation system and so the blood does not flow in well defined blood vessels so there is open circulatory system in their body so therefore in arthropoda the blood is not circulated flow very well in the blood vessels and the coelomoy cavity is bladder filled and they have joint legs legs the wood arthropod means joint legs so some familiar examples of arthropoda are prawns butterflies house flies species sorry spiders and many other things so let's see how the poor examples are you can see the palomen means the brown the palomenius means the scorpion this is scientific name the arania means spider the butterfly and the musk means house fly and the peri planeta means cockroach and scolophendra means the centipede these are the uh, animals uh, that comes under arthropoda and they have their scientific name also you learned here some simple small small scientific name next is mollusca So in the animals that come under come under these groups, there is a bilateral lateral symmetry and the coelomy cavity is reducted. So there is bilateral symmetric, but and their uh, coelomy cavity is reduced. They do not have coelomy cavity, but there is little segmentation. So they have little segmentation. they have an open circular system and kidney like open like organs for excretion so they have open circulatory system and they also have kidney like organs for their excretion and there is a foot that is used for moving around so they have foot legs for moving around some of the examples for these uh, mollusca is snail and mussels so the chiton the octopus the pila and the unio these are the uh, species or animals or species that comes under mollusca next is echinodermata so here you can see there is a huge still huge information you have to learn okay now let us come to echinodermata so in greek in the greek if anyone say echinos it means head ke ho means spines spiny animals and derma means skin so spiny animals derma echino dermata spiny animals skin thus there are spiny skinned organism these are the spiny skinned organism means these are exclusively free living marine animals they live in the marine water so they are triploblastic and have co elmic cavity they also have a peculiar water dra- drive tube system that they use for moving around so a system water driving system peculiar water driving system that helps them to move inside the water as they live they are the marine animal and they use and they have 
they have hard calcium carbonate structure they have very hard calcium carbonate structure that they use for use as skeleton some of the examples are sea stars and sea urchins so their scientific names and their real name let us know so antidon it is known as the feather star the holo Turia, it is known as sea cucumber. The echinus, it is known as sea urchin, and the asterias, it is known as sea star. So these are the species that come under echinodermata. Next is protocodata. These animals are bilaterally symmetrically triploblastic. They are bilaterally symmetrically triploblastic and they have a co -alone. And in addition, they show a new feature of body design. They are namely the notochord. At least at some stages during their lives, the notochord is a long rod like support structure so notochord it is a long rod like support structure cord it is meant as string that runs up So protocordata or marine animals, some of the example of Balangnogolus, Herdamania and Amphioxus. So here you can see the Balangolus. So here Balangolus, it has proboscis, the colorata color. It has the anus, the posterophytic region and heptatic region, heptatic caca, midocerasal ridge, dorsal curved genital vinges, gill pores. So this is the example for pro protocodata. Next is vertebrata. So these animals they have a true vertebral column and a true internal skeleton. So, allowing a completely differentiated distribution of muscle attached points to be uh, known uh, to be used for movements. Vertebrates are bilaterally symmetrically triploblastic, coelmoic, and segmented with complex differentiation of their body tissue. They have complex difference, body tissue differentiation and they have organs and organs and all chordates possesses the following features all chordates it uh, chordates possesses these features that have Next is cyclo. So vertebrata are grouped into six classes. One is cyclostomata, 
next is pisks and the next is the amphibia and reptiles and the apes finally mammals first let us know about the cyclostomata cyclostoma sorry cyclostome sorry cyclostomes or javelin they are javelins or tipretas they are characterized by having an elongated in like body they are circular mouth slimy skin and they are scaleless they are ecto parasites or bores or borers or other vertebrates the petromyzoon that is the lamprey and myxine hagfish they are the example for the uh, cyclostomata see here you can see a javelis vertebrata means the petro my son here you can see this is the example for the cyclostomata the next comes is the piscus these are fish they are exclusively aquatic animals so these are the fishes that are exclusively aquatic animals and their skin is covered with scales plates they obtain oxygen that are dissolved in the water by using the gills as you know fish use gills for breathing so the body is streamlined and a cold plate and uh, muscular tail is used for movement they use muscular tail for the movement and they are cold plated and their heart have only two chambers their heart have only two chambers unlikely the four that humans have and unlikely humans have four chambers so humans heart has four, four chambers Uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, left auricle, right auricle, these are the four. And they also lay some eggs. They lay eggs. The piscus they lay, means the fishes they lay eggs. You can see. So we can think of many kinds of fish. Some with skeleton made entirely of. So here you can see the example. So first is the let us know their scientific name. Next we will know what all their real name. So the first is the fish is Cinchiropus splendidus means ma means mandarin fish. It is known as the next is. Colo Firene Jordania means angler fish, it is known as. The next is Tetoris Wolitan, the lion fish. Next is the electric ray, means the torpedo and the string roy finally the scolo scoliodon the dogfish next here is the thing that is the labio rohita that is rohu that have the um, cartilage bones and cartilage they have but these animals these the first this you learnt no it does not have the cartilage uh, skeletons made entirely of cartilage some with have cartilage but skeletons made of uh, both bone and cartilage is you now we are learning this only it has cartilage 
no so male hippocampus seahorse next is exocoideus means flying fish next is anabas the climbing perch so these are the example for the piscus so you learned both that has first a these a these are the they have both oh, they have only cartilage but this the b in the example b you are learning both bone and animals means the marine animals that have both bone and cartilage first next is sorry next is amphibian these animal differ from the fish in the lack of skills so these are very much different from the fish no more to learn in the piscus they are very much different these are uh, from them this amphibia is very much different in having muscus gland in the skin so they are having muscus gland in the skin and a three chambered heart and a three chambered heart they have and respiration is through either gills or lungs so they do respiration either through some have gills some have lungs and they lay eggs these animals are found both in water and uh, on land so in both water and land you can find these animals some of the example are frogs toads and salamanders and they are in some or so salamander you may know uh, salamander that comes in the house and toad toads and uh, the rana tegria tegrina that is common frog and hyla that is tree frog these are the frogs this hyla common frog the rana tree Ria, Rina, these you can find in the water. Living the toad you can find in uh, water, I think so. And Hydra you can find in the land. Sorry, Hyla. Next is reptiles. So, reptiles they are cold plated animals that have scales and breathe through lungs they, they, uh, reptiles breathe through lungs while most of them have three chambered hearts so the, most of the reptiles have three chambered heart crocodile have four chamber and they lay eggs with the tough covering and do not need to lay their eggs in water they do not need, need to lay their eggs in the water like amphibians snakes turtles lizards and crocodiles for come under this uh, reptiles category so here you can see the turtle the chameleon the king cobra and the flying lizard that is called as scientifically called as draco and the house wall lizard that is called as uh, that comes inside the house that is the Hermido Armido Titus So these are the animals or these are the um, species that comes under the reptiles. Next is Aves. So these are warm bladed animals. So these are very much warm blooded animals. They have four chambered hearts and they lay eggs and there is an outside covering of feathers for them and two is an and two four limbs are modified for flight and they breathe through the lungs and all birds fall in this category the all birds that comes uh, the all birds uh, that are in this world comes under this category 
someone let us come to example of apes the white shark their scientific name is psychonia psychonia the ostrich that is known scientifically known as strato stratio carnelus the male tufted duck that is known as aithya fully gula and the pigeon the sparrow and crow these are the apes the birds that come under this apes category next is mammalia so mammalia they are very much warm blooded animals that have four chambered hearts and they have mammals glands for production of milk to nourish their young ones and their skin has hair as well as sweet and oil glands and most mammals are familiar to us that produce their young ones however a few of them like the platypus and the echidna they lay eggs and some like kangaroos give birth to very poorly developed young ones some examples of them are shown in 7.6 so the scheme of classification for animals is shown in 7.27 so some of the examples of mammals like whale that uh, whale cat human rat bat and this all the example that comes under the uh, a mammalia so carolus linnaeus carl von linn was born in sweden was a doctor by profession he was interested in the study of plants at the age of 22 he published his first paper on plants while serving as a personal physician of a wealthy government official he studied the diversity of plants in his employ in his employer's garden and later he published 14 papers and also brought out the famous books the sustainable nature from which all fundamental taxonomy research have taken off his system of classification was a simple scheme of arranging plants so as to be able to identify them again so let us know the animals animals that have cellular level of organization that are porifera tissues that are level, that have the level of organization they are of two types one as uh, one is no body cavity between epidermis and gastrodermis and another one is coelmatum in no body cavity between epidermis and gastrodermis is a coelentera and platy platy helminthes comes under this and some one another one is the sudo coelom for the nematode come and nematode come under this sudo coelom example and coelomate there are two types one is the mesodermal cells from a single cell during growth of the embryo another one is coelom formed from the pouches pinched off from the endoderm the mo or the mesodermal cells from a single cell during the growth of the embryo the examples for them is uh, the annelida mollusca arthropoda and the other one is the coelom formed from pouches pinched off from the endoderms or uh, two types notochord no notochord it has one notochord is present no notochord is echinodermata notochord present is chordata in chordata there are of two types notochord presents in at least larval forms but very 
retermentary protocore data comes under this notocord replaced by vertebral column in adults vertebrata comes under this and in vertebrata there are around six types the one is javelins ill like circular mouth scales slimy skin this example is cyclostomata exoskeleton of scales endoskeleton of bones cartilage breathing through gills piscus come under this and gills in larva lungs in most adults slimy skin amphibia and exoskeleton of scales laying eggs outside water reptilia exoskeleton of feathers lay eggs outside water flight possible that or is and exoskeleton of hairs external eye ears mostly giving birth to live anguances yeah next is nomenclature as you might be able to appreciate it would be difficult for people speaking or writing in different languages to know when they are talking about some organism so as you know it will be very much difficult for people to know and write different languages uh, about the organism that they are speaking so this problem was resolved by agreeing upon a scientific name of organism in the same manner the chemical symbols and the formula for various substances that are used in the world ever so for this solving this problem the scientists they thought that we can make a scientific name for the organism as there are chemical names like chemical compound name like carbon c mg magnesium like that making scientific names for the organism the people scientists and people agreed uh, so the scientific name for substances are used uh, the worldwide the scientific name for the organism is thus unique and can be used to identify it anywhere in the world so the scientific then they thought of making the scientific name very much unique and can be easily used to identify anywhere in the world to identify anywhere in the world to identify that organism making the easily that much easy scientific name the system is scientific naming or nomenclature we use today was introduced by carolus linnaeus so carolus linnaeus who introduced the scientific naming that we are learning now the scientific name of an organism is the result of process of classification so the scientific name of the organism helps in the result for classification that uh, put it along with the organisms so it is most related to but when we actually name the species when you actually name the species you do not list out the whole hierarchy of group or uh, of group that uh, to which group it belongs whole group whole information you do not go instead we limit ourselves to write the name of the genus and species instead of naming whole group whole classification doing their classification of that species we only name their genus and species name of that organism so word over it has been read that we used in the whole word i have agreed that they use this name as name in the latin forms some certain conventions are followed while writing the scientific names the name of the genus begins with a capital letter some certain rules like the name of the genus begin with capital letter the name of the species begin with a small letter when printed the scientific name is given in italic when written by hand the genus name and the scientific name should have been underlined separately these are the four rules you have to follow while writing or while uh, knowing the uh, follow while writing the scientific names so here you can see some questions 
सो ओके फ्रेंड्स दिस इज योर चैप्टर क्लास सेवन सेवेंथ चैप्टर डाइवर्सिटी लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म पार्ट टू रो सो आई थिंक यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस चैप्टर सो ओके फ्रेंड्स लाइक द वीडियो कमेंट ऑन माय वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल मैं क्वेश्चन सेंटर फॉर मोर वीडियो आई विल चैन माई नेक्स्ट वीडियो एक्सप्लेन चैप्टर टिल देन टेक केयर अवेन एस डे बाय मेरे फ्रेंड्स